Hi everybody, quick update. Um, been pressing on with these uh, World War II Russians. These are more of the plastics at the moment. I've got a couple of sets of artisan ones on the way. Well, actually just arrived. So um, I'll be doing some one piece metals soon. But yeah, these are the sort of continuation of these Russian troops. Really enjoying them. Um, what we've got here are well, these three. Are actually going to, these well this lot here are part of sort of complete the rifle um, squad because I've got um, five I think two four no I've got six figures previously completed and they're part of the rifle squad and then uh, these ones complete that I think that's right no he's at with them machine gunner machine uh, submachine gun yeah that's right so to finish off that rifle squad from earlier it's these again I've done a mix of the sort of tan and green uniforms this chap here is the officer gave him the machine gun I'll zoom in a little bit Actually, I've not quite finished these, to be honest. Uh, I've got a, I've got some of these resin bricks on the base. I've got to paint those yet, and the officer's got to have his red headband done. But other than that, I think they're pretty much there. Uh, yeah, there's the light machine gunner and his mate is from the previous batch kneeling down. In fact, I might as well stick him behind. You can see who's who in the rifle regiment. So that there is a squad, uh, yeah, rifle squad, um, with a submachine gun and a light machine gun. So yeah, very much enjoying them. Really nice, nice figures, really nice ones to paint. <laughs> like I say, I'm sticking to doing a mix of uniforms because I like, I mean, whether it's entirely accurate, I don't know. But um, I like both uniforms, so I'm going to do both. I'm sure they had sh equipment shortages. Uh, one thing I do like about these plastics, I mean, you can get you know like the same bodies basically. And uh, I mean, there for instance, they got the same running body, but they still look like completely different figures. Um, all you got to do is like. You know, different head, different slightly different weapons or arm pose, and you know they look look a lot different. I mean, you wouldn't really know they're all part of the same build, really. Yeah, so that's rifle squad, and these ones are the start of a submachine gun squad. Um, the only thing I'm finding with these plastics and submachine guns is there's plenty of submachine guns but there's not that many arms that hold them properly I mean some of these have kind of you know they're just about in there but they're not really holding it quite properly but yeah, it looks good enough from a distance so that's my only problem there not enough arms for the, sub for the SMGs but I'm going to rectify that by buying a few um, a couple of packs of Crusaders Russians uh, metal ones, and they've got they do two they do several packs of submachine gun uh, troops. Uh, the, I'm getting two packs, I think. So I've got eight to choose from. One pack will be in grey coats, but you know it doesn't have to be winter. It'd still be like spring, you know, cold, wet spring time. So um, you know, I'll, I'll stick some grey coats in amongst them and some in normal uniforms um, and that'll pad out the submachine gun unit because like I say I'm struggling to 
sort of fit all the guns into the arms, so um, that's the way I'm going to get around it. So that's the troops on foot. Now the uh, support weapon things. That's a cat meowing, wanting food. This is like the light machine gun to go with these, with the submachine gun squad. There. Uh, get a better look at it. Quite like these um these sort of bases now. Uh, I was never a fan of more than one figure to a base, but you know, I, I like it for these uh, sort of support weapons and light machine guns. That's my cat Starsky thinks he's going to be fed now and it's too early. Not yet mate. No, not yet buddy. Excuse me. Uh, so that's the yeah, light machine gun team to go with the submachine gun squad. And then this is anti-tank rifle. Bit of a glare there from the light, but um, still more of a glare. Slightly better, maybe. Yeah, uh, anti tank gun team. Happy with how these are coming out. Uh, like I said, for this, uh, for these Russians, I'm doing them as uh, like urban setting. And what I've done here is, uh, when I've been to Salute, a company called Sally Forth, I think they're also called sort of War Games Buildings or something like that, but Sally Forth's a name I know them by. They do some MDF buildings and they do these photorealistic print printouts to go with them. So you sort of make the building up and these are sort of photorealistic textures that are. Um, on adhesive paper and you obviously attach them to the building. I haven't bought any of the buildings yet, uh, I like the look of them so I'm probably going to but at the moment you can actually buy these photorealistic textures as a, a PDF printout. Um, what well, as a PDF? I'll just show you sort of how it comes. So you get something like this, so it's all the, not very good view there because it's too close, but um, you get basically, it's basically the layout for um, one of their buildings. Um, so you can order it, it's just a PDF. Uh, and um, I've got some A4, adhesive paper, printer paper. So rather than it being like loads of labels on a sheet, the whole sheet is actually an A4 size adhesive label as it were. So I've basically um, used for these, I've used some 5mm foam board, uh, you know just cut them out as rough ruined shapes, printed out these textures um, basically just cut the, stuck them onto the thing, cut the shape around and then um, to the edges to hide the foam of just glued some sand, painted the edges and um, I think they look great, I'm really pleased with them. They do uh, three or four different textures, they got quite a few buildings. When I say I do quite fancy getting the buildings but um, at the moment I'm just sticking to ruins. I mean what I might use these sheets for is actual creating larger scenic ruins and then um, you know so do some damaged buildings and just get as much as I can out of the of what the I say that beside the this building edge you know just sort of cut a ruin shape out of that and just make up some 
ruined buildings, corner buildings, that kind of thing, corner sections and that sort of thing and just attach the adhesive um, textures to it. But I think these look quite effective. Uh, I'd say the textures are really nice. So I've just stuck them on here yeah, and I've painted some varnish over them. Hopefully that'll protect them. I mean, uh, yeah, obviously keep them out of the light as much as you can, but hopefully they won't fade. Um, but I was impressed with them. I thought they were really nice. They do. I've got a couple of different sheets so far. I've got this stonework, and then I've got a sort of red brick one. And I've, I'm going to order some more. I've seen they do like a a plaster um, texture, so it's like for the inside of the walls if you want to do those. And they also do like uh, a rendered texture as well. So uh, I'm going to order a few of them, and uh, I can do all sorts of sort of bits and bobs then with them. But yeah, one day I'll, I will get some of the buildings. I mean, they're not a bad price because they supply the buildings and they supply printouts of the sheets as well so you don't have to print them out yourself but if you want to make bits like this those PDFs are a really good little thing to get I think and they're only a quid quid each the PDFs so I'd recommend those so yeah that's how the Russians are going so far next I'm going to do some um, I'm going to do a Maxim team and a heavy mortar team and I've got an anti-tank gun, uh, anti-tank, uh, what do you call it, yeah, anti-tank gun, yeah, big gun, so that's what I'm going to do next, I think, um, yeah, so that's those Russians, happy with that, I'm really enjoying these actually, I'm sort of really enthusiastic about them, hopefully I'm going to stick at it, which I don't normally with anything, but uh, I'll give it a go. Now, uh, sort of addressing a request from Helcorex, he's doing some US. Well, he's doing some US troops. He's doing some uh, US airborne, and I mentioned offensive miniatures range to him because I think they're brilliant. And uh, well, he's going to do some airborne at some point. He's not doing them yet, so I mentioned those uh, those to him. I'm going to zoom back out a minute. Try and get these in a bit better. It's going to be a squeeze. I'll have to come back on the camera a bit, actually. Yeah, Helcorex is doing a thing of doing US Airborne. I mentioned these offensive miniatures to him, so he was asking about how they compare to Warlord. So uh, here's another quick figure comparison, like a few different types. <laughs> So we've got an artisan um, German paratrooper. That's a metal warlord, US airborne. That's an offensive miniature airborne. This is plastic warlord airborne. That's a crusader British paratrooper. This is an assault group um, panzer grenadier. Then we've got a plastic Perry Desert Rat and then a plastic Perry uh, metal Perry Desert Rat. So you can see roughly how they compare. Um, I'll just zoom in for Helcorex's sake for what he wanted to see. So there's your sort of comparison of Warlord and um, Offensive. I, did, I already mentioned to him in comments on one of his videos that the uh, offensive ones are a bit more realistic pro uh, proportions, so they're a bit slimmer, whereas Warlords are a bit chunkier. But height-wise, they're pretty much of a muchness. Just they've got like, you know, slightly bigger hands and heads and that sort of thing, really. But I'd have no qualms about mixing them. So for Helcorex, there's comparison for US Airborne. I hope that's of some help. And for everybody else, well yeah, like I say, you've got Artisan there. Artisan Warlord, Offensive Warlord, Crusader, Tag, and then the Perrys. 
I would say they all mix well apart from the Perrys are a bit smaller. The Crusader one's quite chunky. But uh, generally, you know, I've, I've mixed them all, I think. I mean, I've, for the desert, for the Perry ones, I think I've got loads of Perry Desert Rats and Africa Core. And despite the fact Warlord have just bought their sets out, I think I'm going to just stick with Perry ones because they all do match obviously perfectly together and they've pretty much got the range covered themselves. So I'm, I say that I'm bound to buy the Warlord, Africa Core, and, and the Desert Rats, but moment uh, the way I'm thinking at the moment is when I get round to it when I get round to it I'm most likely going to stick with Perry's for the Desert War stuff but I will get a box or two anyway so yeah that's a, a quick figure comparison um, yeah as you can see like the Perry's are smaller and more slender but great figures uh, they're all great figures, all these ranges, I love them all, I think they're all great. Um, but yeah, they are correct, there's your US Airborne comparison. So height wise, pretty much similar. It's just the Warlords are a bit more chunky because the offensive ones are a bit more uh, realistically proportioned. So uh, that's about it, I've had a few more subscribers popping up, thanks to you. Uh, you all know who you are. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Thanks to everybody who does subscribe and who watches and comments, as always. So uh, much appreciated. Uh, I'll try and get another update done in another week or two. I'm gonna, like I say, I think next I'll do a few um, of these Russian teams, mortar teams, and maxims and that sort of stuff. Have got a few Roman bits to do. Uh, not necessarily for me, but uh, for someone else. So I'll probably be putting those up. They're actually, Britons. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get started on those at some point soon. Um, but yeah, that's about it for now. Uh, hope you enjoyed the vid. Thanks again to everybody, and take care. See you.